Let's walk through the parts in this simple arm. The first part is going to get attached to a 30 by 30 millimeter aluminum extrusion. It has four holes for that. It's a 3D printable part and um, the bolts that hold it to the aluminum would be here, 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 and here. Even with just two it's enough to start bolting it up and start testing. And it prints best if this is the face set down to the platform um, on your 3D printer. That's, that's how you get a good result for printability. The first tower is a 1.5 inch uh, PVC tube or CPVC. I like the CPVC because it's gray. And um, 1.5 inch describes the nominal measurement of the inside, not the outside. So uh, you'll find that if you dissect the model. Up on top of the PVC is this blue part, which is another 3D printed part. Um, it's uh, to be set on top of the PVC and it glues on with some uh, PVC glue or super glue. And then it has two holes. Um, one of them ex is exposed here. The other one is exposed up here for screws that are going to secure the servo assembly. So <clears throat> let's hide this part and let's look at this green part. The green part is kind of a minimal um, bracket that will hold any general uh, hobby servo. Of course I've purchased a few of these and they vary more than I expected in their dimensions so that's why we have a, a little bit of a gap on these sides so that if your servo is a little bit bigger or shaped differently then we have some wiggle room and the design will still work. The four screws um, that secure the servo to the bracket will go here and here and here and here and those are screws that usually come with the servo. They're, these fit properly and, um, and there should be a deep enough hole and they're coarse screws. They may be M2.5 or M3 coarse type plastic screws. <clears throat> so when you build your assembly you put the servo into the green part and then you can slide that assembly into the blue hidden bracket okay and then this uh, flat disc is a servo horn that comes with most common servos you can see that in the purple 3d printed plastic part I, I leave clearance and and what's not modeled here and not shown here is the screw that secures the plastic servo horn onto this um, set this gear okay and on my uh, on my assembly this is metal but on a lot of them they're nylon um, then in the servo horn also I've not modeled but I have measured the spacing for these four holes and you can use an M2 uh, coarse screw that's the same one uh, on a couple other locations on a robot they're very very small metal screw that goes in uh, these four locations and keeps the purple bracket centered on the rotation axis and then <clears throat> on the back side of let's hide this uh, we'll make it transparent we'll make this transparent on the back side of the green bracket there's um, a bearing and this is the 708 um, steel ball bearing that's used for skateboards for long boards also used on the scuttle robot that just um, it snaps in here these three little nubs kind of compress against the inner race and then when it's installed when the bearing is installed in the green part its outer race is free to spin and its inner race is kind of compress uh, press fit on this little um, boss okay so the bearing goes into the green part the servo horn goes onto the green part um, goes onto the servo and then the purple component um, we'll show that, we'll hide this. The purple component will get, um, you'll need to spread the two wings and it's going to come and snap over this, um, the outer race of this bearing. And this part, 
you can center by hand once you get it centered and once you have the servo straightened to the zero degree position then you can put this um, up and down like that in that direction and this purple bracket is designed to be printed with this face flat on the printer okay and then once again uh, glue pvc glue or super glue can secure the pvc tube to this um, this region and it's uh it's a 0 0.75 mil a three quarters inch pvc pipe from home depot or something like that okay we come back and we will show this component we will make it not transparent anymore okay and then essentially let's show the other component the range of motion that you're going to achieve is a little bit more than 180 and most of these servos have um, they're specced at 180 degrees of travel so you should be able to minimize um, to, to swing your servo all the way forwards and backwards without any problem and um, then the the cabling uh, will be easier to show in the real parts but this is the wire that comes out of the servo it can get fed down all the way through the assembly through this channel so that that cable will be out of the way will not uh, get cut by this motion and then the cable that goes um, down to the second joint is going to come out of your PVC tube here if you want or it can pass through up the top if you want and you can drill a hole in the PVC tube um, maybe in this area or in the area that does not have a lot of travel through its rotation so you're not tugging on the wire you insert the cable into the tube and then you can send it up here and it can make its way to the new green bracket and this green bracket's the same same exact design as the one below. The purple is the same exact design as the one below, but it's mounted. Um, you're going to glue it upside down with respect to this one and facing facing each other. And then this joint can move like that. And um, the blue part is also identical to this blue part. Um, in this assembly, it's called the cap A. So uh, then I, I thought of designing one single part that will mount, that, that will secure the, the final PVC arm, but I wanted to have commonality and commonization. And so this is the same part. And then we have an adapter to print. Um, there wasn't a lot of thought that went into this adapter. You could make it more attractive if you want, but basically it just holds this pipe, this tube. And there's a couple of constraints in here that describe the system, such as the um, this bracket has an axis, the rotation axis, describing the axis of that joint, and it's set to have a certain distance. This is 150 millimeters from this joint to this joint, just in case you want to use that for your kinematics. <clears throat> and of course, that depends on how you glue in real life, that depends on how you glue the purple parts to your PVC. So you can choose that if you want. And I'm going to um, suggest that if you make this, uh, if you distance this more than 150 millimeters, or if you have a heavy payload at the end, then you can add more weight back here at the back. Um, this was just a quick idea to uh, connect a counterweight that's made of a 3D printed part, uh, again, with this this face planted to the 3D printer base and it holds a hockey puck and the hockey puck standard hockey puck is 170 grams and you could you could make this taller you can stack more of them one two three four and uh, and you will still have clearance against your assembly because you you have to come out of this face not not the opposite direction you'll still have clearance to swing and um, and that will help you to help this servo to have enough power to lift uh, whatever's on this end of your of your assembly.